Today's episode on Real Awakening, I wanted to talk about, see, I, I love Jesus. I love everything about him. I love to teach about him. And I love, because some of this, I'm just, it just amazes me how much of the resurrection you can see through the story. So it's kind of like an allegory to the story of, um, which I know it did happen, but it's just, it's an image of the resurrection. What it kind of, what it looks like. So I'm going to talk about the man in the tomb. So Mark 5, 1 to 20, they came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him, and he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him any more, even with a chain, because he has often been bound with shackles and chains, and chains been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs in the mountains and gashing himself with the stones. And seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed before him, shouting with a loud voice. He said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, by God, do not torment me. <clears throat> For he'd been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons implored him, saying, send us into the swine so we may enter them. He gave them permission. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out of the unclean spirits, Entered the swine and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about the two thousand of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what, what it was that happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon possessed sitting down clothed and in his right mind, and the very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it, seen it, described to them how it happened to the demon possessed man and all about the swine. And they began to implore him to leave their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed was imploring him that he might accompany them, and he had not let him. But he said to him, "Go home to your people and report to them what great things." Uh, the Lord has done for you, and he has shown mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. So let me teach this. Let me give you a little bit of depth here. This is a lot of fun here. This is incredible. When you're set free, you are free indeed, mm -hmm. and the truth shall set you free. So where is he dwelling? In the tombs. What is in there? It's dead. The tomb is dead, like a whitewashed tomb. Everything dead. Everything stinks. When he's saying you have an unclean spirit, probably not, couldn't be very well bathed here. Mm -hmm. Probably smells like garbage. So let's start off there. But he's coming out. When he comes out of the tomb, it's a showing that he's being released. His chains are being released. And it's kind of interesting. Like, take a look at the sea. The sea here, it's, it's kind of like people here. So Jesus sent the unclean spirits into the swine. And hey, if you're one of those tree huggers or whatever, suck it up. Or animal rights PETA activists, suck it up. Okay? Don't cry about the pigs. So, but get back to here on a serious note. The spirits entered the swine and the herd rushed down into the sea. You know, that's just like God. This is like exactly symbolic because Jesus sent Pharaoh's army into the sea. 
This is another demonstration how Jesus Christ is God. So if you take a look at the Old Testament here, you could take a look at the um, Exodus story, the er Exodus narrative here. That's what he's sitting there describing. And here's the thing. So, I mean, it's just really incredible because you see right there is everybody's scared and this guy is all sitting here, you know, you take away the train around somebody's neck. You literally have Jesus redoing the Exodus story where he's being freed. Like Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's army is being led free and this guy is being led out of the darkness. Because you know darkness is, uh, tombs are really dark. I don't know if anybody's ever been in a tomb before. I haven't. So I'm pretty sure they're not having a party in there. I'm pretty sure it's just black. But he's sitting there coming into the light. And a lot of times when you come into the light, your hygiene even gets better. Because usually what changes on the inside is usually reflected on the outside. So... Just very fascinating. I love this. I love Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've given us. Thank you, so Lord Jesus. I love you so much. I mean, thank you for giving us your son. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ today, get to know Jesus Christ today. Because it's the gospel is Jesus saved me from my son. You've all sinned and you all fallen short of the glory of God. Wages of sin is death, so that's a problem. You all have lied, cheated, stolen, committed adultery. You know, if you think about killing your brother, you're guilty of murder. So, and here's the thing, you're going to say you have such a good heart examine your heart back and forth everything you ever thought and everything you ever did so what would happen the first one gets you thrown to the lake of fire then the next one gets you into like what you call super hell and there are probably levels of hell because you know jesus is sitting on the white throne he's handing out punishments he, you know, nobody's saved when you get to the white throne judgment. But regardless, there's going to be different stages of hell. And so that's the bad news. And, you know, and you know the stuff is sin. You cover it up. Look at everything you keep secret. If I brought it into the light, why do you keep it a secret? Why? Because you know it's sin. You can't tell me it's not sin, what you believe in. You can't tell me that it's not sin, because you hold everything back. Women go to strip, when you go to a strip club, everything's dark in there. Why is it dark? Why isn't it illuminated? Wouldn't you rather see more flesh? Or they're really ashamed of what they're doing in there. They don't want to be caught, because what they know is so wrong. Those women, they don't even give them their own names. They don't do it in pornography. Even if they do stuff publicly, it's all hidden in plain sight. Politicians don't ever admit to lying. But they lie all the time. Why? Because, you know, they're a, pile, they're a miserable pile of secrets. So, that's the bad news. But the good news is, Jesus Christ can rescue from that, you from that, and can take the chain right off your neck. And you can be set free. You can be set free. You can sit there and move, walk with the Lord. And you know what? You can sit there and ride off into eternity with them. And if you're not sharing the gospel, you can be throwing that lake of fire as well. I love you very much. Peace.